Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. As most of you probably know, I started this series of videos to expose the lie that Elliot Roger was connected to the men's rights movement. But I am now expanding it to cover any falsehoods, misconceptions, misinformation, or outright lies spread about the MRM. So let's get stuck into it. I came across this little gem the other day, oh boy. But anyways, I've always seen myself as a guy, as a super guy, as a mega man if you will. My hand can indeed turn into a gun. But anyways, my, the point I'm trying to make is I never thought about gender that much or that heavily. And here all of a sudden I'm on a website that talks about gender rather openly. So first ever time I haven't actually think about it. Now, I came to the realization that I'm still a man, I'm still Superman, I am indeed still Mega Man, and my hand can indeed still turn into a gun. But there is something about gender that bothers me, and that obviously is gender stereotypes. They are sometimes insane. But after thinking about it, I realized that the most insane aspect of gender stereotypes and, and something that after I, I thought about it, I decided to look up and actually research is men rights groups. Oh, he actually did some research? Well in that case, I guess this will be a short video then. After all, if he has all the facts, then I won't need to do any debunking. Or men rights activists. They are insane. Oh, I get it. By research he means only looking at the propaganda and ideology of those who oppose men's rights. You know, kind of like if you wanted to know about Jews and Judaism, instead of asking some Jews, you would ask a Nazi. Or if you wanted to know about African Americans, instead of actually speaking to African Americans, you would ask the Ku Klux Klan. Because I'm sure those opinions would be unbiased, right? Just as the opinions of many self-described feminists are totally unbiased towards the men's rights movement. Look, it's simple, you should never just take someone's word for it, you should always look at both sides. And that goes for me too, please don't take my word as gospel, I'm not perfect and can make mistakes, or for all you know, I could be swayed by ideology as well. Which is why I have citations, and links, and encourage debate in my comment sections. I have a simple philosophy, it goes like this, if your argument is sound, then you shouldn't feel insecure or threatened, by people looking at, and considering, a different viewpoint. In other words, if someone in a video, or an article, or wherever, makes a claim about a group, or an argument, or whatever, then go check it out for yourself. If nothing else, this series should have shown you that, people constantly twist, misrepresent, take out of context and outright lie about things all the time. Next. I don't know why I started looking them up. I don't know why I started researching. I knew they were bad. I just wanted to know how bad. Oh, okay. So in other words, he formed his opinion before looking for facts, and then only looked for those facts that confirmed his opinions. And this is meant to be unbiased research. And that was a bad decision, because I can't sleep too well at night anymore. Because these guys are nuts. I'm not exaggerating. Like, they're not a little bit nuts. They're really nuts. Okay, so here's my problems with men's rights groups. Better strap yourselves in, guys. This will no doubt be good. And men's rights activists. And why I think they're not a good idea. Okay, number one. They invented a word. That word is incel. Oh no. Not the incel claim. I dealt with that bullshit way back in episode 1 of this series, and episode 2 from memory, and probably episodes 3, 4, and 5. I'm kind of sick of responding to it actually. Incel is a word used by pickup artists, who are an entirely different group of people, with different goals and different methods, from the men's rights movement. I have never heard a single MRA use the word incel, except to say, I've never heard of the word before. But there has been an attempt by certain so-called journalists to link the men's rights movement to the pickup artists because they wanted to link us to Elliot Roger. Pure misleading propaganda by dishonest hacks. The unfortunate thing is that idiots like this guy believe anything they read that confirms their already biased views and fail to ever do any fact-checking 
to see if they are in fact being lied to. Sad really. But go on, tell us about incel. This should be interesting. Um, which means involuntary celibate. That word's a horrible word. Okay, number one, it suggests that being a virgin and not having sex is bad by default, which it's not. Yeah, the thing is, I've never ever heard a men's rights activist claim that. However, I have often seen feminists use similar insults. You know the type, insinuating that if you are an MRA, then it must be because you are lonely and can't get a girlfriend. This of course is just shaming language, attempting to derail debate, and distract from real issues and arguments. But the whole point behind the men's rights movement, apart from correcting injustices, is to not define masculinity by societal constraints or constructs. And defining a man's worth, by his ability to attract women, is restrictive. But go on. I can't just prove that. Number two, it insinuates that all men are owed sex, and if you don't get it, it's a bad word. Incel is used as a bad word. So, number one, no one owes you sex. By all means, anyone, please link below where an MRA has ever said that women owe him, or her, sex. I hear this claim often, but have yet to see any evidence. No doubt there may in fact be one or two individuals within the movement who have left a comment that could be interpreted this way, as there are always a wide variety of views in all movements. But I greatly doubt anyone could find such comments from anyone of any renown within the movement, or more than a handful of comments, if in fact any, from your normal average MRE. But by all means prove me wrong if you can, and link below in the comments section. This is just another derailing tactic. This is just an attempt to avoid actual issues, and to paint all men's rights activists as sex-starved misogynists. Sorry, but until you can prove this claim is at very least common amongst MRAs, I'm just going to assume that you are dishonest arseholes who don't have any legitimate arguments to make. You're not born and say, I need to get sex at least 20 times before I die, or else. Th that doesn't... That, that, that statement doesn't happen. No one owes you sex. And if you don't get sex, you're not bad by it. It's not like a, a handicap. It's not a downgrade. Well, I guess it's fortunate no one is making that claim then, isn't it? I wonder if he will eventually get to any actual things said by actual MRAs. It's not. But they made up this word anyways. And the, the craziest thing about it is it's a word that's an insult to themselves. They couldn't get laid, so they came up with this word that means bad things if you don't get laid. They insulted themselves. They made up a word so they could bear insult themselves. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? I don't know why they did it, but they did. And I don't like the word because it insinuates that you have to have sex and that guys are dependent on it. It's a bad word. Number two reason I don't like men's rights groups is they don't do anything! Oh, okay. By not doing anything you mean like holding lectures at universities to talk about men's issues? Um, but they tend to get shut down by angry feminists. What about the first International Men's Rights Conference? Oh that's right, it got terrorist threats from angry feminists. The simple truth is, we are still a very young, very small, movement, which is underfunded, gets biased reporting in the media, and constantly has feminists stand in our way whenever we try to do something. We need to change people's opinions, before we can have any real power to change the real world, and that's an uphill battle in itself. Maybe if we didn't have to constantly fight lies and propaganda spread about us, we could actually get more done in the real world. But if you want an example of real-world activism, you could always have a look at A Voice for Men, and their activism on the Nicholas Alaverdian case, for example. Greetings Internet, I was at the Nicholas Alaverdian rally, 
And for those of you that don't know, Nicholas Alaverdian is a lobbyist and a youth advocate that was falsely accused of sexual assault and was denied a jury trial by Judge Carl Henderson. And I was there to help out, make some signs, help speak out, help. Uh, I did some minute keeping for the speakers, and I got a chance to actually sit down and interview Nicholas. Now, the reason I brought this topic up with Nicholas in the first place was because I wanted to present, uh, publicize his case in a class on media literacy on my campus, Kennesaw State University, and I wanted to use his case as an example of uh, court biases against men and boys. And his case is pretty uh, is pretty interesting because when I, we were over there at the rally, the big thing that Nicholas needed to do was actually go out and file a motion for a jury trial. And should the motion be denied, he'll have a capacity to, you know, take the case to higher and higher courts. And if he takes the case to higher and higher courts, and should he actually get the jury trial he needs, he will set a precedent from in a very high court that will spill over into other courts and will actually help men and boys because judges will not be uh, so ready to toss away men's rights. So this is a very big case, and if you do not understand Nicholas's story, I highly encourage you to go to his site in the low bar, go ahead and read the court documents, the court transcript, and all that. You'll learn about the parties involved, and you'll learn just how much hell a single accusation can cause a man. So for those of you who, especially those in an academic environment, who want to get more of a perspective on a uh, somebody who was denied a constitutional right, and to under and for those of you who want to understand why men's issues are important, um, just want to go ahead and share my talk with uh, Nicholas with you, and just frankly, I'll leave the floor open for a discussion in the comments section. So that said, I hope you enjoy this. Well, hey, well, Nicholas, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to speak with me, and I do understand that you've had a very rough couple of days, and I know you just want to relax. I uh, did want to bring you uh, your case some additional publicity, since I do know that this is a very important issue. It affects all of us. And uh, particularly what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking your case to do a very short five-minute presentation to a class full of feminists, as it turns out. This is a media... Oh, great. Yeah, this is a media... Should I paint a bullseye on my forehead or something? Well, I mean... that, well this is the, the thing that I plan to do is I plan to take this issue into the, into the middle of a location where, frankly, it, the issue needs to be asserted. And by... I, I do strongly believe that by asserting oneself in an environment where you, you might see some ideological opposition, as long as it's presented well enough, you show that you're not going to go away, that there are some basic human rights that we need to focus on, regardless of how people might feel about it. But it Victor Zen, who you just saw in the clip, is also very active on his university campus. There are also numerous grassroots groups doing things in their own communities. Men's Rights Edmonton is one that comes to mind, who are very active out in the public. But to grow, we need awareness, and the internet is the best place to fight that battle. I think spreading awareness, and changing opinions, is the main battlefront at the moment, and shouldn't be viewed as, doing nothing, any more than someone who might consider themselves a feminist, would consider the numerous feminist authors out there, as doing nothing. All movements start with ideas, concepts, discussion, and debate. And the internet is a great place for such things to thrive. They insinuate that they're fighting for guys' rights, but they don't really do anything to help guys' rights. Feminists do more to help guys' rights. Feminists do a lot to help out with guys' rights. What? You mean like 40 years of demonizing masculinity? I don't doubt that there are some feminists out there that are actually concerned with the rights of men, even Lacey Green, for example, as I showed in my recent series on circumcision is against male circumcision. But I don't know that they are actually doing anything, anything beneficial anyway. What laws have feminists ever changed to help men? What societal attitudes have they helped to change? Name one prominent feminist, just one, who has ever spoken out against the sentencing gap, or ever done a single thing to try to change it. In fact the opposite is true, there are numerous feminist groups around the world trying to widen the sentencing gap. Anyone who thinks that longer sentences for men, because they are men, and shorter, 
or no sentences for women because they are women is in any way fair or equal can go fuck themselves next men's rights organizations don't do anything to help out guys rights at all if you go on a men's rights website there'll be these long rants about how to get lucky with women here we see the perfect example of an idiot spouting an opinion about something he knows nothing about he said if you go on to a men's rights website yet it's clear from his argument that he has never been on a men's rights website he is in fact talking about pickup artists and it's pretty clear that he has been told his opinion by the same biased journalist who I have debunked in earlier episodes of the series. It would have taken him all of a few minutes to actually go onto an actual men's rights website, but I guess that would actually involve an open mind, some effort, and actually thinking for himself. And if anyone out there can prove his claim right, if you know of any men's rights websites that teach guys how to pick up women, Please go ahead and prove me wrong by posting the link in my comments section for all to see. And and also why feminists are evil. And also random racist comments. Well considering the lies feminists tell about MRAs, not to mention the protests and threats they make to try to silence us, I would think we have a very good reason to claim feminists are evil. As for racist comments. I would argue that there is exactly the same level of racism in the men's rights movement as there is in any other part of society in general. Once again you will note that he never gives any examples or citations. Funny that. None of it actually relates to men's rights or helping out dudes. Every now and then they'll mention some random thing about, oh if someone gets divorced the girl will probably get the kids. But they don't suggest anything to solve that problem and they- You mean like equal shared custody? This guy's level of research, or lack thereof, is astounding. Just highlight that to say, oh, we're doing something. No, you're not. You haven't suggested anything to solve that problem. And to be honest, they exaggerate problems like that. They make it sound like it's happening like crazy when it's not really happening like crazy. Oh, so fathers do get equal custody already? Really? When did that happen? Maybe he is also unaware of the fact that the already high male suicide rate goes through the roof during a divorce. As I've said before, usually when a marriage breaks up, the woman loses a husband, but the man loses his whole family. Like, like, there was one post that compared female circumcision to male circumcision um, and said that male circumcision is horrible. Now, if I have kids, I'm not having them circumcised, if they're guys. But, no guys die from being circumcised. Well, my last two videos, close to 40 minutes each, were on circumcision, so I won't spend a lot of time on this claim, as you can watch them for a great deal more information, links below. But just in case some of you haven't seen those videos, I will deal with these claims briefly. Male deaths due to circumcision. Mourning the loss of a young life. At 18 years of age, Afrikile Nokanda had been just the right age for undergoing Uluwaluko. But he was never to return. According to the post-mortem report, the cause of death is listed as septicemia and signs of assault. But the young man's family and his traditional nurse are adamant he died because of a stomach ache. He was not ill. He just died on the seventh day. We are deeply hurt as this family, because he had gone there with our consent. We were looking forward to him coming back home alive. He complained of stomach ache while he was fine and well with regards to the circumcision procedure. I sent for his father. He came and found him in a serious state and was dying. These boys are from the Ndebele tribe in South Africa. As part of their culture, they were all circumcised four years ago after attending an initiation school to prepare them for the ceremony. In their community, they are now regarded as men. And they're surprised that so many boys died during the procedure this year. When we were in the initiation school, we were 270. But we came back all of us. But I don't know why they are dying now. I don't know what's going on now. This is where ancient customs collide with modern medicine. At this hospital, 
36 young men are being treated for horrific injuries sustained during their circumcisions. The nearly 300 initiates who are receiving treatment in various hospitals here in the Eastern Cape were rescued from illegal initiation schools and were found near death. Most have been treated for dehydration, gangrene and septic wounds. Some others have even lost their genitals. It's always been a dream of mine to be a husband and a father of three. But now that will never happen. I've lost my manhood. What quality of life will I have? Is there life after this? To put it simply, yes, it's true that in many places around the world, female circumcision results in death. But you will find that in those exact same cultures, that male circumcision results in death as well. Even in the West, under the best conditions, males still die from circumcision. Once again, just a couple of minutes of research would have shown this. I'm circumcised. I'm not dead. I don't think anyone was claiming that male circumcision is fatal 100% of the time, were they? One out of four women die from being female circumcised. Huge issue. Male circumcised, kind of issue, kind of. But women, one out of four dies. Real issue, huge issue. Tons of women dying. Real thing, crazy. Male circumcision issue. It's not, it's not not an issue, but you get where I'm coming from. They exaggerate issues, you know. And here we have the, but women have it worse. So men's issues don't count, argument. I assume he is aware that you can be against both male and female circumcision, and that's it's not the case of one or the other. But let's use this form of logic, and see if we can make an equally fucked up argument, just to prove a point. Using figures from just a few years ago now, in the USA, more men are raped in prison, than women outside of prison. These figures are from both the Department of Corrections as well as the FBI, by the way. There were 216,000 inmates sexually assaulted in prison, adjusting this for the male prison population, we get around 200,000 male victims of sexual assault in prison every year. Now if we compare that to the number of rapes reported for the same year, we have around 90,000. Using these figures, and feminist logic, because male victims, who by the way are probably sexually assaulted repeatedly within a year, outnumber female victims 2 to 1 then shouldn't we only focus on male victims of rape? Clearly male rape victims need our priority. Right? Of course this argument is bullshit. We should in fact be concerned with all victims of rape, regardless of their gender, and regardless of the gender of their rapist. We shouldn't go around saying, well because the victims of this group over here, might have it worse, we should then ignore that group of victims over there. If more females die of genital mutilation than males, that doesn't excuse the fucking male deaths for one minute. One does not make the other okay. And considering that in the West, female circumcision is a crime, yet male circumcision is condoned, excused, and in some places even promoted, it should be pretty clear that male circumcision is something that needs a lot more discussion. Well, those two things don't even be compared. One's like having your finger, like, skinned a bit and really hurts, and the other is like cutting off your head. They're completely different things. Once again false. Yes it is true that there are forms of female circumcision that are worse than male circumcision, but there are also types of female circumcision that are not as harmful as male circumcision. I go into this in much greater detail in my two recent videos on male circumcision, once again link below. But I have to ask, why is it a fucking contest with people like this idiot? Why not just be against all circumcision? After all, he even admits that if he ever has male children, he wouldn't get them circumcised, so why not just be against all circumcision? Oh but hold on, only female issues count, right? So that's my, my second complaint. My, my third complaint is they, they just seem hateful. They just seem to hate everyone. And they, they blame everything on feminists. And like, it doesn't even matter what it is. They'll blame it on feminists. It doesn't even matter what it is. Now, if you would shut the fuck up for the 50th billion time. Like, they just blame everything on feminists. And they seem to hate themselves a lot. Like, I went to this men's rights site and, and like they had an entire thread 
like they have, no, not an entire phrase, an entire section of their website, entire section of their website called call out the sluts that you've seen. And of course he has no link to this website, so we can go check to see if it is actually an MRA website, or if he is being truthful, or even if the website even exists at all. But I did do a Google search for, call out the sluts that you've seen, and I found no results. I then did a search for, call out the sluts that you have seen, and still found nothing. So I searched just for the term, call out the sluts that, and found only these results. To be honest, I shouldn't have to look for this website, as he is the one making the claim, and should be the one supplying the evidence. And as a great man once said, that which can be asserted without evidence, can also be dismissed without evidence. So I'm just going to assume that the site in question is not an MRA site, or is fictional and the result of an ideological poison mind. If anyone wishes to provide a link, please do so below in the comments section, and I'll reconsider based on the evidence, but until then, I'm calling bullshit. There was another one that had an entire section of the website called Point out all the women that lied about being raped. Once again he doesn't supply any link, not even the name of the website. Once again I did a Google search and found zero results. Once again, that which can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. Next. Uh, actual justification for that crime was a main section on the website. These guys are nuts. Well, first off, as I have just stated, I have no evidence of the existence of his claim, or even the website it's meant to be on. But assuming for a moment that it is true, then pointing out women who have lied about being raped, does not justify rape. You wouldn't say that someone being found innocent of murder, justifies murder, would you? Well, sane people wouldn't anyway. Next. Nuts! Crazy! Mean! And, and they just, they're a hate group. Now if you would shut the fuck up for the 50th billion time! They are. Um, but yeah, so my biggest complaints is they made up the word incel. They don't actually do anything for men's rights. And they seem to hate on feminists for really no reason. Oh, I think we have lots of reasons. In fact, I think his entire video is reason enough. They also take things that are actually negative towards women and turn around to make it seem like a positive towards women. You know, women are harassed and, and, and you know, sexually harassed a lot. Like, guys say, oh, you're hot, or yeah, yeah, yada, yeah. And you go on a men's rights website, and the thing will state, women get complimented for their looks all the time. You know, women love being complimented for their looks. You know, Once again, no links, no citations. Is it just me? Or is this complete and utter moron talking about pickup artists? No, so it's just this turnaround. We know that's not true. We know women don't like being harassed, but these guys like to tell themselves that they do. Because they're crazy. So, I don't know. It, but, like, also gets to me that, that people seem to be getting more and more against feminists. I honestly can't imagine. Why? Now, if you would shut the fuck up for the fiftieth billion time, for stupid reasons. Now, 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 there can be proper reasons to get mad at feminists. There are some feminist subgroups apparently that are not supportive of, of transgender women and those who lie, and those who try to silence those who they disagree with, and those who dismiss men's issues. Don't forget those feminists as well. That's what I've heard a little bit. But it's not all feminist group, and it's not the norm of feminists. Oh, I get it now. So what he is saying is that, because some MRAs are bad, who in reality are actually PUAs. That means that all MRAs are bad. But, because some feminists are bad, 
that doesn't mean that all feminists are bad. Yeah, seems completely fair and unbiased, at least it does if you are a biased idiot. Listening to this guy struggle with simple logic is about as productive as sticking your head in a bucket of wet cement. And unfortunately with all groups you're going to have subgroups that are, that are not nice. But I've been on feminist sites that are pro transgender women too. Um, and when I have, and women have done so much to try and get equal feminists feminists have done so much to try and get equality for everybody including men still waiting for that citation about the feminists working to stop the sentencing gap I guess I'm going to be waiting a fucking long time you know and the arguments that I hear against feminists are always just so simple they're always just feminists are bad I don't like them there's never any explanation or reasoning behind it it's always just a generic I don't like feminists but no why and here is further evidence that this guy has never been on a men's rights site or even so much as watched a video by a men's rights activist or no reasoning behind it just I don't like them because you know I, I tell you why I like I tell you why I like I like equality and I like people being treated right. And Unless you were male, apparently. And feminists have done a lot more for that than men's rights organizations. They've actually done stuff for that, unlike men's rights organizations. So I really don't get why this one group gets all the hate and this other group doesn't. When the one group says the guy who has just made a hate video against MREs. Group's done more than the other group. Okay, one group's done a lot, the other group's very lazy. No. One group has been around for a hundred years, gets community support, and truck loads of money, both public and private, while the other is relatively new and still grassroot, gets lies in the media, and has very little in the way of funding. Hardly a fair contest. But then again, we tend to have logic on our side. Let's just put as fact there, because it is. So, yeah, if you have a legitimate argument for against feminism, you can make it. But please have a legitimate argument! Well, I guess that's one of the main differences between feminists and MREs. We tend to have legitimate arguments backed up by logic and facts, while they tend to resort to straw man arguments and lies. Something! Anything! Not they dress stupid, or, or, or they won't make me a sandwich. Now he's just trolling himself. Think! And I'm not saying there's not sexism against men. There is. But to be honest, it's typically caused by men. Like, like the sexist stereotype that men can't be raped. Unfortunately, that does happen. That's a horrible thing. And that occurs. But the reason why that sexist stereotype exists is because men like to go on and some men, obviously not all because that's a stereotype, but men have spread the rumor that all of his men love sex. Oh, I see. It's only the men doing this? Although it is true that there are some feminists who acknowledge male victims of rape, this is usually only if they are victims of another male. Almost universally the feminist perspective on rape is female victim, male victimizer. Female victimizers are rarely talked about, even when their victims are other females. And if you don't believe me, then why do we only ever hear, teach men not to rape, from feminists, why don't we ever hear, teach women not to rape? or teach people not to rape. Your normal average feminist's perspective is extremely narrow, with gendered victims, and gendered victimizers. You could even go as far as to say, they like to assign gender stereotypes to sexual assault. Like crazy, I don't. 
I've never even had sex. And the gene pool. Thanks you. But some men have spread that rumor. And if we all like sex and never hate it, then, then that means rape is not plausible because rape insinuates you didn't like sex. So who created that myth? Who created that sexist stereotype? Men. Men did. Men. That was our own fault. We did that. We did that. Women didn't do that. Feminists didn't do that. We did that. That was our own fault. So yes, there are sexist stereotypes towards men, but we've caused a lot of them. And here we have the, if men have issues, it's their own fault argument. We're still the ones in power. We're still the ones in charge. Women still get paid less. A lot of the time. Women still get harassed a bit more. A lot of time. Bad stuff still happens. Sexism is still real, and men's rights groups are not helping. They're hindering quite a lot. So anyways, very random rant. Very random rant. I know. But they're crazy! Well, since I started putting this episode together, it seems he has added a citation. A citation to We Hunt the Mammoth, which was formerly known as Man Boobs. He hasn't linked to any particular article by the way, just a general link to the website. Using man boobs as a source to judge the men's rights movement, is kind of like using the protocols of the elders of Zion, to judge Judaism, in other words, propaganda. But I did leave this guy a long response in his comment section. A couple of others left comments as well. So he never responded directly to us, but posted another comment in his comment section. Clearly this guy has been drinking the poison Kool-Aid all his life. Some of you may be asking why I featured such an idiot, and the answer is simple. This is the end result of the articles I've featured before, this is their audience. Logic-starved ideological morons, who wouldn't know a good argument, or a fact, if their life depended on it. But all that means is, this guy could go on to make a ton of money in feminist academia. Next. Before I describe the mistake that the men's rights movement is making, first it's helpful to describe what they are. Uh, the men's rights movement is taking the literal definition of equality and currently trying to apply it to women and men. So if you are wondering who this guy is, his name is Roosh V, and he's a pickup artist. Remember all those things the previous guy said about the men's rights movement? Men's rights organizations don't do anything to help out guys' rights. At all. If you go on a men's rights website, there'll be these long rants about how to get lucky with women. Well, he was talking about Roosh V, or someone like him. Roosh V's new trick. Pick up world map ranks women based on sex. Roosh Vorek, the notorious American pickup artist known for sharing his female seduction techniques in books, is making headlines once again. The books have been criticized as Bibles of Rape, but this time, it's his fans who've created a world pickup map to categorize different nationalities of women. The world map ranks women based on how easy it is to have sex with them. To Vorik, Central African and Southeast Asian women qualify- You get the idea. So are we clear now that pickup artists are not the same as men's rights activists? Anyway. Let's listen to his first point again, 
and then I will address it. Uh, the men's rights movement is taking the literal definition of equality and currently trying to apply it to women and men. Well, I have to say, that's one of the fairest and most positive things said about the men's rights movement by a non-men's rights activist. But I'm guessing he has a problem with this. Let's see. They want women and men to be treated exactly the same in every type of situation. Well, exactly the same under the law would be a good start. Female circumcision is banned throughout the West. Why not male circumcision? Equal shared custody would also be good. And what about getting rid of the sentencing gap? Just to give a couple of examples. And there also needs to be equality when it comes to societal views. We need to acknowledge male victims of rape and domestic abuse. We need to stop excusing the bad behavior of some females by saying things like, he must have done something to deserve it. We need to stop seeing a man's worth based on his value as a provider. We need to acknowledge that men have issues too, and we need to talk about those issues. Just to give a couple of examples. But continue. They want to use the legal code and existing ins institutions to ensure this equal treatment. Some of the cases that they're agitating for is, is helpful, like how currently men are treated less fairly in the case of divorce alimony, child support, and child custody. While I do appreciate how they're trying to eliminate the double standard with how certain laws are, are applied, their basic philosophy comes down to this. We're victims too. Ah, and he was doing so well up to this point. Look, it's pretty simple. Acknowledging that men can also be victims is not taking part in the oppression Olympics. And if it ever started to go that way, I'd be the first to speak out about it. All types of people have all types of different problems. Having issues is part of life. But these issues are often downplayed when it comes to men, and exaggerated, mainly by some feminists, when it comes to women. I hate the way many feminists refer to all women everywhere as a victim class, it seems just by being female automatically gives you a victim card, regardless of your actual circumstances, which is by the way, far more misogynistic than anything ever said by any MRE. So the last thing I want is for males to be automatically given victim status, just for being male. That however, does not mean that there are not individual males who have been victimized, or that there aren't societal systems, or attitudes, that disadvantage men. I can't help but think that the misuse, and overuse, of words like victim, and oppression, by feminists, and social justice warriors has warped their meaning. Being a victim shouldn't give you oppression Olympics points, but it shouldn't be something to be ashamed of either. Personally I don't consider myself a victim. I've never been raped, I haven't been falsely accused of rape, or dragged through the family courts, and luckily, I was never circumcised either. But that doesn't mean that I won't speak out about those things that have happened to other men, or that I'm not concerned about the demonization of males and masculinity or that I've never been unfairly judged because of my gender, or that I don't find many of the attitudes towards men, downright fucking offensive. The argument Rushvi is using here, is just another form of shaming language, albeit much more politely delivered than we normally get from feminists. But effectively, it's the same shit. Next. Men are victims too, and you need to give men just as many benefits and help using the legal system so that we are treated as fair as women. Yeah, women and men should be treated exactly the same by the legal code, but at the same time, the men's rights movement has no answers for in, an individual man who wants to improve his life, who wants to make more money, who wants to be healthier, who wants to meet girls and get laid. Is he going to plug one of his books in a moment? But seriously, why would the men's rights movement be concerned about individual men getting laid? What exactly has that got to do with human rights? It's bad enough I have to explain this shit to feminists all the time. Once again, to any feminists or hack journalists watching, Roosh is a pickup artist, and pickup artists are not men's rights activists. You can tell by the words he is using, you know, the ones where he is addressing the men's rights movement is an entirely different group with entirely different goals and methods. Anyway, 
Let's continue. So while they offer a societal fix to eliminate the damages caused by the feminist movement, they can't help the average Joe on the street who is just trying to improve his day-to-day -day existence. I would argue that effecting positive change in a society is the most effective way of affecting change in individuals within that society. The mistake that the men's rights movement is currently doing right now as we speak is allowing women to infiltrate their movement and become figureheads and spokespersons. Oh no. Before we go on, just let me state for the record that I am in no way concerned with the gender, sexual preference, race, or whatever of a person making the argument, I'm only concerned with the argument itself. Hey, I'm not a misogynist, because I hate male feminists too. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt, by the way. But seriously, I'm not concerned, or threatened by women in the men's rights movement. I'm not going to give them any special treatment because, vagina. But I'm not going to judge them harshly because of that either. In my opinion, they sink or swim, based on their own behavior, their own credibility, and the quality of their arguments just like anyone else. But please continue. Driving the policy and the weight of the movement itself. They're allowing women to rise to the very top. The best explanation that I can come up with is that the media will be more open to broadcasting their views if women speak. And you'll notice that some of the media coverage that the men's rights guys have received in the past couple of months haven't been as bad. I recently saw a Vice clip which was pretty fair in describing what the men's rights movement is. I think this is actually a fair point. I think having prominent female members does make it harder for many feminists and hack journalists to point their fingers and scream misogynists. Although they still tend to do it anyway. And if that was the only reason female MRAs were around, then I would be critical of them. If their only purpose was as a mouthpiece, and no other, then they would be deserving criticism. But that's simply not the case, and female MRAs have repeatedly proven themselves as worthy members of the movement. But at the same time that they enjoy this short-term media boost, they're giving power and influence to a gender who has no loyalty to men. As anyone who has dealt with women know that they're they can love you one minute and then hate you the next. Geez, where to start with this? I could probably do an entire video on this topic alone, and probably will one day, although, to be honest, I'm not in any hurry as it is a patch of land filled with land mines. But to sum up briefly, I really fucking hate when feminists class all men as being the same, you know the drill, all men are liars, all men are cheaters, all men are misogynists, all men are pigs etc etc yes it's true that some men are those things as are some women but not all men or for that matter all women just as not all women fit the characterization put forward by rouge do some women fit into that characterization no doubt as do some men even though i have personally known women that fit rouge's characterization not all or even most women i have known fit into that characterization there is good and bad in both genders, let's not be hypocritical and condemn feminists for something we then turn around and do ourselves. Having said that though, there are aspects of society that condone, encourage, or excuse bad behavior based on gender, but that goes for both genders. An example which has for a long time pissed me off, can be found in many mainstream movies. If there is a male character who cheats on his wife, then usually he's doing it because, that's what men do. But if a female character cheats on her husband, then usually it's because her husband wasn't giving her enough love, or he was too busy working and she felt ignored, or whatever. In other words, she's the victim, even when she is the one doing the wrongful act. It's a complex question, as to whether our opinions are based mainly on nature or nurture. But like I said, this really is a complex issue that deserves more time than I have here. It doesn't matter how much love you invested into them, how much you help them in life, but the minute that their attraction or their interest in you is gone, then they will treat you like a garbage man. So right now the 
women in the men's rights movements are feel really strongly about helping this movement and helping men, but that's because they're receiving tons of validation and, and attention. Things are easy. Things are fun for them. We're transferring, while well, the men's rights guys are transferring influence and power to these women who in a year or two, once they're bored, once they are no longer happy with the attention they have received by hijacking a community of men, are going to move on and take their followers with them. Yeah, I really have to disagree with this. I think it's pretty insulting to insinuate that females would only be concerned with men's issues to get attention for themselves. And not only insulting to those women, by the way, but also insulting to the rest of the men's rights movement as well, because effectively Roosh is saying that the issues aren't reason enough on their own, that there has to be ulterior motives. Personally, I think the issues are more than enough reason. Besides, if the female MRAs were just seeking attention, they could probably receive much more by being feminists. It turns out that introducing women into your men's movement is nothing but a Trojan horse. On this day, yeah, you'll get a good article from the news outlet. But on the next day, when that woman who, let's be honest, women really don't have loyalty to men, and they will always subconsciously put females in front of men, then what are you going to do? You're going to feel like a total fool, and it's going to set your movement back. As I stated earlier, female MRAs won't get special treatment from me, because they are female, but neither will they get negative treatment from me, because of their gender. I personally treat them no different than any other MRA. And I would like to think that most, if not all MRAs would agree with me. Another reason why you shouldn't let women into your men's movement is because then you start to attract guys who are so starved for female attention that they become members just to receive scraps of attention from the few females that are in the room. This claim is kind of funny. Becoming an MRA to get pussy would be a bad choice. Firstly, there are vastly more males in the movement than females, so odds would be against you. And secondly we are spread out all over the world, meaning that there would be even less female MRAs in your neck of the woods. But we are not here to get dates. If that's your concern, join a dating website. Simple. Men are lavishing so much of their energy onto these women who, let's be honest, their ideas are not better than the existing ideas that have already been put forth by men. I'm not saying that these women are copying and pasting. But there's nothing they have said that has brought anything new to the discussion of men's issues. I would have to disagree with this claim. But if I were to play devil's advocate, and for the sake of argument consider Roosh's statement true, then they would be no different than a great number of male MRAs. Not everyone within a movement is going to be a leader, or a great thinker. You may already know that on the blog, Return of Kings, I prevent women from participating in any way. Now that may be an extreme measure, but I believe that's the right step into making sure that your group, your community, your movement is not poisoned by women who have ulterior motives and who don't, who are not going to have your beliefs and your concerns in their hearts and minds for years and years. Okay. Where to start with this one? Firstly, I do respect the right of any group to restrict its members and who has feedback within the group. But just because I respect that right doesn't mean I think it's a good or a productive thing to do as you will most likely just end up with an echo chamber and most probably a biased or a hate-filled one at that. Need I mention Radfem Hub? To be fair though, it is true that one group can invade the space of another and attempt to take that group over, or change it. Need I mention feminists attempting to do this within the atheist movement? I cannot see this happening within the men's rights movement, at least not with women as Roosh suggests. I think one of the principles of the men's rights movement is to respect women, but not to pander to them. At least that's how I see it. Like I previously stated. 
I'm not going to treat female MRAs any different than male MRAs, after all, why would I need to? They are strong adults, not children. Next. Maybe right now they are lonely, they're lacking in attention, they want to hijack a community of, of, of men. But if you're trying to build something long and lasting, you have to let the women do their own thing on, on the side. Let them have a booster section where they have their own blogs and if they want to comment on this or that, it's fine. I've never been part of a feminist group and I've never been to a feminist meeting so I cannot comment firsthand how feminists treat their male allies. I'm sure there are some groups who treat them equally. But, what I have seen numerous times online, is feminists talking down to their male allies. Even the term male ally sounds segregationist to me. Just another reason to never be a male feminist I guess. Because, if you actually consider it that way, only women can really be feminists and it's kind of also well, kind of it it is a, an exertion of male privilege for men to want to be like oh why can't i call myself a feminist too because really the term is meant for women um it was created for women it was created by women it doesn't really make sense for you to co-opt that term and like i said linguistically it doesn't make sense either so for that reason i'm more in favor of men referring to themselves as feminist allies and not just feminists my point by the way folks, is a simple one. If we ever start treating our female members, the same way feminism treats its male members, you can count me out of the movement. So I have to once again disagree with Rouge. Next. But to let women rise through the ranks of your movement and essentially be a spokesperson of it is suicide. It's insanity. And I really don't understand why the men's rights guys are willing to receive a, just a little short-term gain for putting their movement in risk in the long term. If the men's rights movement fails on its own when men try to make it work, then that's fine. But if it fails after you've incorporated, incorporated women into the movement, then how will you know if the men's rights movement was a cause that had a chance to succeed? So you really shoot yourself in the foot when you allow women to come into the, into the movement and failure will be that much worse if you don't allow men only to fight for the causes that they feel are most important. What I hear from Roosh is that the men's rights movement should adopt the worst aspects of the feminist movement. That we shouldn't base our opinions of our female members on who they are or what they do but on what their gender is that we should have male only echo chambers and that if we allow female members they should know their place as second class members of the movement fuck that that's all the shit I hate about feminism if these ideas ever take root on the men's rights movement you can count me as an anti MRE it's that simple I know that the men's rights guys hates me and they're not gonna take this this advice which I'm very sincere about well I honestly don't know enough about this guy to hate him. But what I do hate is pickup artists being associated with the men's rights movement. As I hope this video has shown, we are two very different groups, with very different goals, methods, and philosophies. The only thing is, I don't want to have to point back to this video in a year or two and say told you so. If my experience with these guys is any in indication, they're just going to keep allowing more women to enter their movement to they're going to lavish these women with attention, validation, give them a platform, and then in two or three years, once those women are tired of participating, my words are going to come true. And I hope not, but that's the way things are, are going. So that's all I wanted to say for now. Until next time. For the record, if you are wondering why I have included Roosh in this video, after all he clearly isn't a toxic feminist, it's because of the number of times throughout this series that I've had to make the point that pickup artists are not men's rights activists. So although I considered replying to Roosh's comments in a separate video, I thought it had a place and relevance in this one. Well I guess that's it for this one folks. As always, don't drink the poison Kool-Aid.
no guys die from being circumcised. But 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 no guys die from being circumcised. And what about death? Well, there are some studies which purport to show that some something like 200 babies die in the United States of America from circumcision. Now, the death certificates don't always say cause of death circumcision. They'll say hemorrhage or overwhelming infection and the circumcision gets hidden uh, in here. But there's no question in my mind that babies die every year from circumcision. And of course, uh, in countries which are more primitive than our country, in the African countries, the death rate is much higher. Uh, the acute major complication rate will vary anywhere from 0.5% to, in best conditions, 2.5 uh, to 3%, and in the uh, more primitive countries can be as high as 